Decision for Life. Welcome to First Baptist Church Indian Trail. Isaiah chapter number six. Uh, now that's in the Old Testament, okay? That, that's on the left side uh, of your Bible. You may have to you, you may have to unstick some of those pages because that's not normally where we're going to do our daily devotions. But Isaiah chapter number six, and uh, we're going to look at Isaiah's vision for just a few minutes. Uh, but I wonder, as you're turning, I wonder how many of you, uh, sometime in the last few weeks, you just really felt like you're just kind of stuck spiritually. Maybe you just feel like you're just in a rut. Maybe you need a, a fresh start. Uh, that was posed to me just recently, and I, I hadn't been able to get it out of my head. It just rolled over there, and I'm thinking about Isaiah's fresh uh, start. And by the way, this sermon is not limited to Christians. It's limited uh, to anybody that would just want to hear, uh, but if you're here this morning, you don't know Jesus Christ. Maybe it's the first time you've ever been with us. We want to welcome you, uh, but I, I'll also let you know that uh, uh, even though you may think that you're on the outside looking in, you can have a brand new life today. Uh, you can have a new start with God today. And then some of you Christians here, you just feel like, man, I've been on this uh, spiritual treadmill and I've had it elevated and I'm going on and on and I just really need something to jumpstart my relationship with God. Uh, I, I understand that. I understand that. Can I tell you that God's all about Jump starting. Uh, I, I like going to the grocery store. I know that's kind of weird, but uh, I, I'll go to the grocery store about every day. I really do. Uh, my wife thinks it's weird. But anyway, uh, I do. She said, I, I got to go to the grocery store. I said, no, let me go. Uh, but I, I just enjoy walking up and down the aisles. And uh, every once in a while, something will catch my attention. And it will have on the label of something that I use It'll have new and improved. Do y'all ever fall for that line? I do. I'll fall for that line only to discover it's nothing but a marketing scheme. And I get it home and it tastes exactly the same as the old and outdated one that I had before. Uh, but, but God's all about new and improved. God's all about new starts. God's all about beginning uh, again. He's all about the new birth and the new life and the new relationship with him. And, and here's the deal. You know, God sees the future just like he sees the past and he sees the present all at the same time. He knows what's ahead. He knows how to get there. And, and the fact of the matter is God wants to take us with him on that journey into those new things in life. Uh, so let, let me just ask one more time, um, how many of you here this morning, you don't need to raise your hand, but how many of you just feel a little spiritually dry right now? You're just in a rut, want something a little deeper, uh, want something a little more fresh. Well, let's look at Isaiah's passage here in chapter 6 and uh, beginning in verse 1. Um, now, I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to peel off of this in a few minutes about five things that Isaiah had to do to get this fresh start, all right? And when I, when I lift that out of here, I want you to kind of see, why. Well, how does that apply to my life? How can I, how can I extrapolate this and uh, walk out of here today with a fresh start uh, with my walk with God? Okay, pick it up in verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, now underline that little phrase because uh, we'll come back to that in a minute. It's a very important phrase. I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, which, uh, uh, which one had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door uh, moved at the voice of him that cried and the house was filled with smoke. Uh, one, one, or, 
Wouldn't it be great one of these days if the Spirit of God just filled this place so much that the doorposts just shook and the Shekinah glory of God just filled this house came pretty close a while ago. Anyway, and the, uh, uh, then said I, woe is me, uh, for I'm undone, because I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken uh, with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it on my mouth and said, lo, this has touched your lips and your iniquity is taken away and your sin purged. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, here am I, send me. Let's pray. Father, um, I just ask that you preach through me this morning. Lord, I, I can't help but believe out of this good number of people that have come that there are dozens of people that are really not happy with their walk with you right now and feel kind of stuck in the mud, and the muck and the mire of this life and maybe some habit that they have going on in their life. And I, I pray, God, you'd set them free today to enjoy you as never before. For those that are lost for those that uh, really have never known what it's like to have a personal, intimate relationship with you, God, may today be the day that uh, they realize that their sin has separated them from you and that, God, uh, you're on the throne and you want a relationship with them and, Lord, that you can forgive them of their sin. Be Jesus today, for it's in your name we pray. Uh, amen. Now, God says... I see the new, I know the way, and I want to take you with me. So let me ask you this morning, what area of your life right now needs a touch of God on it? What area of your life this morning needs a fresh start? Do you feel a little bit dry spiritually? What do you really want? Why did you come to church today? What do you really want out of your relationship with God? Or maybe it's a habit or uh, something that you need to identify this morning that is causing that spiritual dryness. Uh, five things that I'm gonna really pull out of here for a few minutes and then there are five questions that I'm gonna ask right after that. So the first one is this. When, when I read this passage, I immediately see that uh, Isaiah identified the source of his pain. He, he dated this vision uh, in that verse number one. He, he, he just really pulled it out and he said, uh, in the year that King Uzziah died. So he put a year to it. He said, all right, uh, he, he, when, when Uzziah died, uh, that's when this vision that I had with God, he, and he put a date on it, and he identified it. it and, and if you just look at that word that he died, he died, Uzziah died, and, and all of a sudden you can't help but believe uh, that Isaiah is identifying some source of pain in his life. Now, uh, one, one of the things that we're going to be doing here this morning uh, is uh, I, I think that the most significant start uh, that any of us will ever have in this life is going to come about as a result of identifying some significant pain uh, that has happened in our life. Now, it may not be a physical pain, or excuse me, a physical death. It may be the death of a relationship. It may be the death of a dream. It may be that your family has been torn apart by divorce. It may be some spiritual intimacy that you once had with God that now has been robbed from you as a result of just apathy. But, but, but identifying what that pain is. Now, to help you identify uh, what the pain is, I'm gonna help you to ask yourself a question. Why should I change? Now, there's no simple answer to that most of the time. 
why should I change? Uh, you know, many, many people will walk through life and walk right by their pain and ignoring it if they possibly can and really never identify what the pain uh, is. And so they disguise that pain and they walk through life as if nothing is wrong at all. And if you begin to talk to them about it, they will answer with things like, well, you know, that's just no big deal. Well, what, what's done has been done. Uh, can't do anything about that now. Well, this morning, uh, church, uh, I'm asking all of us to just come clean uh, and be honest with ourselves uh, about what that pain is that is causing this huge desire in our life for something to be different, uh, for a fresh start, for a uh, new beginning. Why should I change? Because the pain hurts. The loneliness is overbearing. The emptiness is about more than you can bear. And you're just kind of stuck and you can't get out of that rut. Can I just say this to everybody in here? If you don't get to the point where you identify what the pain is, in all probability, you're really never going to experience a fresh start. Really, not one that will last. Everybody seems to be wearing masks these days and walking around through life as if everything is just uh, okay. Well, I have good relationships. I'm not sick and I'm not sad and I'm not tired and I'm not wounded. And, and people just wear these veneers and these masks in their life and pretending that there is no wound that pain has created. I'm just asking you as your pastor to come and get real before God and drop those silly masks and get down to the bottom line of the question of why should I change? I, I want a fresh start because I am tired of feeling this way. I, I want a fresh start start and I'm going to quit choosing relationships in my life that I know that don't honor God. I want a fresh start because I'm lost and I don't have any hope for the future. I, I want a fresh start because I want something to change in my soul that is causing this spiritual dryness in my life. If you want a fresh start, then you got to ask yourself the question, what is broken in my life? What's creating this hurt? What's creating this pain? Now, yeah, hear my heart a minute. I tell you this because I love you. God did not necessarily bring that pain to you, but what God really wants is for you to bring that pain to him. And when you can bring that pain to him, then you're on your journey for a brand new beginning. So you've got to identify your pain. Second, uh, you, you must come to the place that you clarify that this is all about God. It's not about you. It's about God. That's what Isaiah did. Watch this with me. He said, when Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. His train filled the temple. I, I saw these seraphims out there and one of them cried, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of of his glory. Now, one of the things Uzziah did is, you know, it's not about me. <laughs> not about this over here. It's about Jesus. And he got to focusing in on Jesus. Let, let me help you because every time that I've ever had pain in my life, and there have been numerous times, um, difficult times, some overbearing times, I can lift my hand this morning and I can say thank you God for the pain because it was that pain that actually caused me to draw more near to you than I've ever been before had it not been for the pain. That, that's what Isaiah is doing right here and it brings to your awareness is that because of God, I don't have to stay in this pain. I can change. But, but so many, here, here's what the deal is. And I face this as a pastor and I watch it in, in people's lives every day when, when they are incurring pain in their life and they identify what the pain is, 
oftentimes they go to the wrong place to deal with their pain. Most of the people, instead of turning to God, they want to turn to self. They listen to some dumb infomercial on television that somehow convinces them that they have it within themselves to be able to handle the exigencies and the difficulties of life. And instead of God being the first response, he normally is the last resort and we want to extend everything about us in the flesh to try to deal with that pain when that self can't do it. Life-altering changes are not going to happen without God. Fresh starts happen because of God. Let me, let me just say this. God is not just one of many motivators. Isaiah said, this is all about God that I don't want to waste my life. It's all about God because I need to change. It's all about God I will change. It's all about God I can change because it's all about God. I, I don't want to settle for the mediocre, the average, powerless life. It's all about him. So, so my question to you here is this. Uh, who is your God? Now we'll use it as a little g, instead of the big G. Because the fact of the matter, every one of us in this room worships something. So the issue is, who is at the center of your life? And if it's not Jehovah God, it is something. What is it that you think that is strong enough to bring about life change for you? So you've got to identify the pain you got to come to the place in your life that you clarify that this is all about God. And third, if you want that fresh start, then you have to testify the truth about yourself. Notice what Isaiah did. He said, woe is me, for I am undone. I'm a man of unclean lips. I dwell in the midst of an unclean people, for mine eyes have seen the king the Lord of hosts. Now, here's what, here's what Isaiah said. Isaiah said, God is holy and I'm not. God's glory fills the temple. My glory doesn't fill anything. And he said, when I saw the Lord high and lifted up and I saw me in the light of God's glory, I just had to come to the place that I had to say, man, that's ugly. And ugly is a good word, isn't it? U-G-L-Y. That, that, that's a good word. How many of you ha have one of those two-sided mirrors in your house? Huh? We, we have one of them, and, and uh, I'll see them in a hotel every once in a while, you know? And you look at that normal side of that mirror, and, and you say, well, that ain't half bad, you know? Looks pretty good. That's maybe a little better than average. But then you turn it to the other side, and it shows all of the pores. It shows uh, the oil that's running everywhere. And then you look a little bit closer, and there's some creepy, crawly creatures that are building condominiums and they got a slurpy straw sucking up the oil out of it. Ugly. Isaiah says, whoa. Do you know what that is in Hebrew? Whoa. You know what that is in Hebrew? Holy cow. That's just kind of where it is with Isaiah. So the question this morning then, is uh, what, what's in your heart? And, and if you want a fresh start, you've got to answer that question. And, and if you take time and you evaluate that and you look down in your heart, you're going to discover some things that, that I've discovered about my own heart. It's not very pretty. As a matter of fact, it's extremely ugly, disgusting. When you look down and you see that wicked thoughts and pride and impure motives, it's just ugly. The problem with a lot of people 
is that they go through their whole life and they really never evaluate what's deep down in their life. When I do that and I see that ugliness, guess what happens? It draws me closer to God. When I see the ugliness, I weep and I, I say, you man, man, you're just a mess. You, you, you just don't have it together at all. But with you, God, I come to the place that I realize that I can have a fresh start. All right? So here's the deal. You identify the problem. You clarify that it's all about God. And you testify about who you really, really are and the truth of that. And then number four, and here's worth the price of admission this morning. In verses six and seven, you nullify the past. Watch this in verse six. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from the tongs off the altar, and he laid it on my mouth, and he said, Lo, this has touched your lips, your iniquity is taken away and your sin has been purged. So, let's take a little survey. Here's one of those times I do want you to raise your hand. How many of you would honestly and genuinely confess, Pastor, I live with regrets in my life. I live with regrets in my life. Here's good news. God doesn't want you living with regrets. And the reason that I know that is because God has given to us the incredible gift of his forgiveness. Amen. Regrets are inevitable. Would you agree with that? Regrets are inevitable. God's forgiveness is available. Psalm 32 says, I acknowledge my sin to you and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said, I will confess my transgression to the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Powerful words. Can, can I say to all of you here this morning, God cares about you having a fresh start. And you can have that fresh start when you come to the place that you're willing to admit that I have sinned against God. I have turned my back on God. I have transgressed the word of God. I have disobeyed God. I have lived a life of sin. God, I agree with you about that. And today, I am willing to confess that and agree with you about what you say about my sin. And God, with your help, I'm going to turn away from that sin and not live that kind of lifestyle anymore. God, with your help, I'm going to have a brand new, fresh start. You know what God says? Great. I forgive you. I cast your sin as far as the east is from the west and I will never bring it up against you ever again. Now, because God gives us a fresh start, because he does forgive us of our sin, if you feel guilty, hear me, hear me, if you feel guilty for something that you've already asked God to forgive you of, it is not from God. It is from flesh or it's from the enemy. God will never bring it back up against you ever again. He'll not hold it against you. That's his word. So the question then remains, what am I holding on to? Am I holding on to the regret 
of some failed relationship? A am I holding on to the regret of some wrong choice that I made in my life? Am I holding on to something that I said that I should have never let come out of my mouth? Am I holding on to some hurtful things that I have caused in somebody else's life? If you've asked God to forgive you and genuinely before God confessed it and repented of it, if you feel guilty of it, it's not from God. What are you holding on to? The problem with some of us in the room is we like to relive the past. <laughs> if God has forgiven you, then live like it. Stop paralyzing your life. Now, if you have trouble doing that, um, I just encourage you to find two or three good godly people and, and just confess that to them and say, listen, I need your help about this thing because there is power in being able to confess that with others. All right, num num number four, num excuse me, number five. I got here quicker than I thought. You ready? Verify your availability to God. Verse eight. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send who will go for us? And then I said, here am I, send me. Send me to do your work. Send me to do your will. Send me to the marketplace where I go every day. Send me to my high school. Send me to my middle school. Send me to my elementary school. Send me as your witness on behalf of what you've done in my heart and my life in this fresh start, in this new beginning. Um, I'm learning more and more of this. You know, I, I, I tell you, it's amazing. Um, I've, been, I've been pastoring since 1976. And you'd think I'd get all of this down pretty quick, but it, it's, it's still, I'm still learning. You, there, there, there's just some things that I cannot control. The reason some of you having a bunch of ulcers in your life and have to take uh, Prevacid and everything else every day of your life is because you're trying to control things that you cannot control. But I'm going to tell you what you can control. You, you can't, can control your ability to say yes to God. You can control being available to God. So Isaiah, he, he got this fresh start with God, and so can we. Now, it's not as simple as these one, two, three, four, five steps. And, you know, it, it's a little more difficult than that, and it, it takes a little bit of work to do that. It takes a lot of faith to be, it takes trust in God to be able to do that. So I'm not simplifying what Isaiah did, and I'm not simplifying what, what I'm encouraging you here with, but here's the deal. You need to get to the point where you identify what is the source that has created this desire in you for something deeper. What's the pain that is causing you to want change to occur in your life? And then get to the point where you realize, well, God, this is all about you. It's not about me. But then you understand that like Isaiah did, when he saw God and God's glory and God's holiness, he saw himself for who he really was. And he says, woe is me, I'm undone. I need help here. And you get to the point when you, you saw where that seraphim came and put that live coal on, on his mouth and, and the Bible says that his sin was forgiven and come to the place that you think, you know, God... I need to get to the point that I forgive myself. If you have forgiven me of all that stuff, who am I to hold on to it? And then just prostrate yourself before God and say, God, here I am. I don't know what you want to do with me. I don't, want you, don't know what you want to do through me, but God, here I am. Send me to my job. Send me to my family. Send me here into the, into the culture. I'm available, God. Whatever it is you want to do in my life. A lady came up to me after the last service and huge smile on her face and she said, I talked to my number one this week and she prayed and asked Jesus to come into her heart and her life. 
She probably won't come to church here, preacher, but, but, but she'll go to another church, but that's all right. <laughs> she was available for God to use her. Are you available? Would you stand with me and let's pray together, please? Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I, I want to ask you this morning, what, what, what is the source of the pain in your life that has created this desire for change? Identify what it is. Quit walking around it. Quit acting as if it's not there. What is that source? Understand that only God can do something about it. Only God can fix it. Take a good evaluation of your own heart. What do you see in your heart today? Are there some things in there that you need to present and bring to God and say, you know what, God, I'm not worthy of your mercy. I'm not worthy of your goodness. I'm not worthy of your grace. You need to get forgiveness. And then when God forgives you, receive it. Don't live in the past. Live as if you have been forgiven. And then just make yourself available to God. Father, I pray that you would get glory in this invitation here this morning. Lord, there's a lot of us in this room that uh, want a fresh start. We want a new beginning. We want to get out of this rut. God, have your will and your way in us. I, I wonder, heads are bowed, eyes are closed for just a few minutes. I wonder <clears throat> maybe if there's... Uh, five or 10, 20 of you here today that would say, Pastor, I don't know Jesus as my Savior. I've never had a time in my life that I can go back to that I know for a fact that God forgave me of my sin, that he came into my heart and that he saved me. And I certainly don't have the assurance that when I die, I'm gonna to go to heaven. I wonder if you wouldn't pray a simple prayer with me, understanding that, you know, <laughs> You can't go to heaven repeating some words that I say. Only Jesus can forgive you. Only Jesus can save you. Only Jesus can take you to heaven. But if you're willing to turn away from sin and by faith trust Christ today as your Savior and Lord, I want you to pray something like this with me. Father, I know that I'm a sinner. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe you took my place. I should have been on that cross, not you. But you love me enough that you gave your life. Today I want to give you mine. Please forgive me of all my sin. I receive you into my heart and into my life. God, with your help, I'll live for you the rest of my life. Thank you for watching Decision for Life. Our location, life group, and program information are available online at fpcit.org. We hope you will take the opportunity to join us in person. Thank you from the family of First Baptist Church Indian Trail.